Hello everybody, welcome to another video about the Lord of the Rings LCG. I am Ryan, back for another attempt at the Wastes of Eriador. Now yesterday me and Joseph played a couple of games with Chad and Joe on the Cardboard of the Rings stream. And we were playing against their encounter deck that they made for the competitive tournament at Con of the Rings. And I don't want to give any spoilers because I think it's going to be a good video to watch, but let's just say that I am in recovery. And I think that when you're in recovery and you're playing the Waste of Eriador for fun, you know it was bad. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, so I'm hoping that this game will be, let's say, less of a bloodbath. Um, so as you may have seen in the last video, I lost horrendously at the end um, to this quest where I threaded out. So I'm hoping for a slightly more favorable run here. I've just put my starting hand back into my deck. I'm using the same heroes as last time, I've got Arwen, Dane, Ironfoot, and Gandalf, joined by Amarthiol for this quest. And when I looked at the log, I didn't really look at the cards in my hand, but I looked at the log, and I'm actually regretting putting that hand back, because it was quite good. I had Aether Swordsman, Unexpected Courage, Silver Lamp, which is uh, good to give me information about the shadow effects, and a Test of Will, plus the Zidral Minor, so it was actually a really good hand. Um, so I may have uh, shot myself in the foot before I even done anything, but let's find out. So I will just give a quick refresh on the quest because um, I did play this the other day again and I had quite an interesting game actually because I got the um, side quest, what's it called? Lost in the Wilderness in Setup. And it turns out actually if you're going to get that side quest in this uh, scenario it's actually the best time to get it because it's really easy to quest through it on turn one when your heroes have got extra willpower. Um, so I'm not hoping for that card to show up in Setup but uh, it'd be... I think it goes to show how kind of very uh, variable this quest is. It really depends on what you get, I think, for those first two cards. Anyway, so we set the pack leader aside out of play, make Shrouded Hills the active location, add the time objective to the staging area with Daybreak face up. I've got control of Marthy. We shuffle the encounter deck and reveal one card from the encounter deck per player. I'll do that in a minute. I've got this pack leader aside. Shrouded Hills is just a five quest point location. And then the uh, main thing in this quest is this objective, Daybreak and Nightfall on the other side. So when it's day, the enemies don't make engagement checks. And then when it becomes day, you return them back to the staging area. At the end of the round, you flip it. And then when it's night, you cannot place progress on quest cards. You cannot cancel any um, encounter card effects. So that's shadow cards and when revealed effects. And force so when it becomes night, reveal an encounter card. So when you flip this, you reveal something. Two cards around when it's night. And then force at the end of the round, flip this objective. So it keeps flipping um, back and forth. So I shuffle my deck. I'll shuffle it um, one more time. So you can see I didn't cheat for anything. Or twice as it turns out. And then I'll draw six. Now in that last game, I threaded out. So I talked about looking for Elf Helm um, in my opening hand. Now here... Um, this is quite nice. Um, I think Gandalf Staff and Wizard Pipe is good. Early Treebeard can be quite good as well, and I'd probably chuck away that hidden cache. Um, I might take a punt, though, on trying to find Elf Helm, because I think it's probably worth it, or some sort of threat reduction. Having these two is so strong, though. I think I'll mulligan. So uh, I'll just take a mulligan on there, here. Um, that's not too bad, I guess. So two Arid Lewin Miners in my open hand is going to be a bit sucky. I can chuck away Glorfindel to get a resource on Arwen. And he was really good in that last run. So that, probably that previous hand was a bit better. Aether Swordsman's great. Unexpected Courage, really good here in case I get swarmed by Wargs. So it's not terrible, but it's not optimal, that's for sure. All right, so I'll reveal that one card per player. I'm going to shuffle the encounter deck as well. And then we'll do that. Rugged Country, all right, that's sort of a softball, I think, because um, there's only two threat, and it's not a warg, which is good. So let's kick this off. So flip this quest card. While it's day, each hero gets plus one willpower, and force when it becomes night, raise each player step by one. Let's go. Ah, oh, three Arid Luin Miners. It's not often you find yourself wishing for an enemy, um, but I feel like I need to get one to... Uh, put those into play. Now I'll probably play Wizard Pipe, I guess. And I guess I'll discard Glorfindel just to get that done. 
And I might play this Ether Swordsman. Because that extra willpower will help me to get through the Shrouded Hills. Now another option here might be to switch them while there is actually a location in a staging area with the Westward Traveller, because that's only a one threat card versus two. Mm, and there's not usually that many locations in this, so I might go that way and just play her while there's something to do with her ability. And hopefully we'll not get a bunch of surging side quests. Called it now, so it's bound to happen. Okay, I'm going to do um, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, probably eleven. I don't think Amarthia can kill anything, really. Um, and I don't have to engage. And if I do engage, I can get a free miner, so it would be worth it. So I'll do 11 because I've got plus one on my two heroes. If you want card, Bloodthirsty Warg. So while it's in the staging area, it gains force. So when it becomes night, Bloodthirsty Warg engages the first player and makes an immediate attack. So I guess I got what I wanted. I got an enemy. Uh, so I get eight progress. One, two, three, and then five on there. I'll clear Rugged Country and I'll travel to Shrouded Hills. I'm going to engage this Warg because it won't go back to the staging area. It's better to actually... Um, take it out of the staging area. Give it a shadow card. Defend with uh, Dane, and I'll discard this Erelu and Miner now to get him into play for free. Deal one damage to the defending character. That's not pleasant because um, that is going to blank him if I get cold from Angmar. And then I'll swap that one, and I'll also put him into play uh, for free. And there's an Armor of Erebor there. I want that card, I think, because that will uh, lessen the need for me to discard cards. So get rid of that. I can't do any damage to it with my miners, so I'll go to the end of the round. I'm going to control R. And then we'll flip to um, Nightfall. So we reveal a card and I raise my threat by one. <laughs> Why do I do this to myself? Why do I do this? Um, so I deal a damage to a hero, and then attach Cold from Angmar to the current quest. Counts the condition attachment of the text. Treat each damaged character's printed text box as if it were blank, except for keywords and traits. So that's going to sit on there. That probably means I need to try to push through that more uh, quickly than I normally would. I'm going to damage Dane again, because then I don't lose another hero's ability. Uh, and that doesn't um, do that attack, because it's not in the staging area anymore. So refresh. Okay, Elven Light on top of the deck, not massively useful. I'll probably do something like playing Erebor Toymaker to get the free armor, and that way um, Dane won't get chipped down. And maybe swap the Unexpected Courage for the Elven Light. I could also get a free Miner if I swap that to the top of the deck. So why don't we go down that route. I'll swap him up there. And I'll chuck this away. And then I'll probably do my 1, 2, 3 for this guy. Toymaker. And that will give me the armor. I might need to be a little bit careful and leave another defender up. Because if I don't, um, I, I can't actually use his ability to discard cards. Uh, why am I thinking about that? I need I need another blocker, basically, in case I get an enemy. That's what I'm talking about. Because I want to play this armor. And if I still had his ability active, I'd play this Unexpected Courage instead. Uh, thankfully, there's nothing in the stage area, So I think I want to focus on clearing this um, Shrouded Hills. I'll go for four, five, six, seven. Now let's see, if I get something 3 threat, I won't quite clear this, but I, I think I want to put some damage on this Bloodthirsty Warg, so I can do 3, 4, 5, so 3 damage to it is quite good. So I'll reveal a card. White Warg, uh, after it engages you, deal 1 damage to a character you control, 2 damage instead if it is night, so somebody is getting blanked. Uh, probably a Marthiel. So that's 2, so I clear the Shrouded Hills, that is perfect. And then I will engage this, because it's coming down anyway. And I'll deal the two damage to a Marthiel. Shadow cards. Now this guy is attacking for two, and he's attacking for four. So I will... Ha! That was dumb of me to do that, actually. I just realized that he's blank, so never mind. Uh, I'll do that. Okay, no damage. And then this guy is coming in for two. I feel like I could get away with a Arid Luin Minor block, but if he gets a um, deal one damage to the defender it would kill that ally 
I think that would be probably better than Gandalf getting blank though, so I'm actually going to chump it, because then I can kill this. Uh, in fact, I can kill that one with Gandalf and Marthiel and the, the miner. Exhaust the character control. Oh boy, I should not make plans. <laughs> there we go. Um, so he doesn't actually die, because that thing's only attacking for two. Uh, he is blank now though, but it doesn't really matter. So I guess I'll go in with my six and get rid of this warg so it doesn't keep um, damaging my characters. So that will die, and then we'll go to the end of the round. And then I'll flip this. When it becomes day, that goes back to the staging area. And then, new turn. All right, Bilbo on top of the deck. So there's no point in putting that on top of the deck anymore, because uh, that was stupid last turn. I think what I might do is draw a card, so I'll draw Bilbo. Uh, Northern Tracker, that's quite useful for attack power. I think playing four willpower though would be really strong here. So I think what I'll do is I will uh, wizard pipe him back and then play him with Gandalf's ability and go and grab a wizard pipe from the deck. There it is. Ether Swordsman on top, that's good. And I don't need to take two enemies this turn, so maybe I don't really need that unexpected courage. So I'll probably um, discard Elven Light to gain a resource and play the Aether Swordsman. And I have a lot of allies that I can start discarding when I get to stage two, so if I do go ahead uh, quite quickly this game, it might not be that terrible. Who knows? Anyway, let's do four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now I'm up by ten, so I can't clear it at the moment. I can take that down, defend it, and I can hit it back for seven, and I've got one character in case I need to exhaust anything for any reason. So let's go with this. Uh, North Downs. Well, it's night, that gets plus two threat, so I make nine progress. So fourteen. It's quite good. I'll travel there. I'll engage that. Shadow up. Defend. Plus one or plus two if it's night. Ugh, this is looking disgusting. I need to get through. And then I'll kill it. So I've got seven. So that's dead. Nice. And then end of the round we go to night. So I'll raise my threat by one here. Flip it. Reveal an encounter card. When revealed, reveal one encounter card for each quest card in play. That's basically just a surge. When revealed, each warg enemy gets plus one a threat until the end of the phase. Perfect time to get that because it does nothing. And then I'll actually control N. Another Aether Swordsman and a test of will on top of the deck. Now I can't cancel, fine, uh, but just having it in hand is great. So I'm going to swap that for that and I'll play that with Gandalf. Another one there, that's very good. I think I will draw that, and then I'll discard this card. Oops, I shouldn't try to play that. I'm trying to discard it, so I'm just going to fix this. I'll leave it there. It's kind of annoying. Um, so I just discarded that to gain a resource, and then I'm going to play that Aether Swordsman. So I've got six willpower on those guys. I love that. All right, it's only two threat. We don't need to quest too heavily. Go four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and hopefully that will clear the North Downs. Nine against two. There is a four threat location, so I'd only make three progress. I don't want to risk a lot of damage. I'm going to do one more character, ten. Up by eight. So if I get four threat, I will clear that North Downs. Okay. One card. Surge. <laughs> Please don't be that. <laughs> uh, <sighs> I should have accounted for that, really. So I should have said, yes, there's a surging enemy, which could potentially surge into the four threat location. So it's actually seven, which means I only get three. So typical on YouTube. So typical. No spoilers for that Cardboard of the Rings video, but if you watch that, you'll see something um, incredible when it comes to my luck when playing cards. So I cannot travel there because I can't clear the active location, and I have no boosts in this deck. 
so that's a limitation of it. I'll take this down, and that is attacking for four. Shadow core has now. If that gets plus two, it will kill Dane Ironfoot, so I do not want to risk that. If it gets deal one damage to the defending character, he's dead. So I probably should have uh, quested with that one and kept that one up. So there's a little mistake. I think what I will do is defend that Northern Warg with Dane. Plus one for each quest card in place, so it's only four. So that's fine. And I'm going to have to defend with Gandalf, otherwise I risk losing Dane Ironfoot, I think. I, now I could chump, but if it gets that deal one damage um, to the defender, then it's undefended, which is terrible. So I may as well just accept that I'm losing this. After this attack, attacking enemy engages the next player. Not going to do anything, but it does annoyingly blank Gandalf. Uh, that should be nobody. Okay, now let's try and kill some of these. So I need five for that one, and four for that one. Looks like I can only kill one of them. Uh, so I think I'll kill this one, because it hits for more while it's night. So I'll do three, four, kill it. And then I've got one, two, three, four. So I can stick three damage on that. End of the round, this flips. He goes back to the staging area, and then refresh. So there's a Zigil Miner there, I knew about that. Uh, maybe I want to think about playing Glorfindel soon. I uh, I really want to get through this stage though, this round, um, because this whole threat raising thing is bad, and this whole blanking thing is also bad. So I'd like to get rid of both of those. So I'm going to draw a card. Gandalf Staff, that is great. That is absolutely great. I'm going to play it for two. That means I can get rid of shadow cards now. And I think I'll just leave it there because I've got a resource to test of will. Questing up against six. We can do much more this round. There's four. I um, feel more comfortable at questing with these guys because I can cancel encounter cards. So if I get the big damage one, I'll be able to cancel it. I'll do 14, 16, so I'm up by 10. Now let's say it adds five again, because I'm dumb. Uh, it'll be 11, so I'll make five progress, one and four, which will leave me too short. So I'll quest with these two, and hope that's enough. Here's a card, Shrouded Hills. Uh, X is the number of quest cards in play, so that's a 1. While well, there's only one quest card in play, Shrouded Hills gains Surge. North Downs, that's a 1. Lots of locations this game. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Just double check that. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yes. So I make 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Done. That gets rid of that, thank goodness. So I get my um, visibility back. And we'll go to the second stage. So when revealed, shuffle the encounter discard part into the encounter deck. Ah, that should be gone as well. Discard cards from the top until X warg enemies are discarded. X is the number of players in the game. And we add each discarded enemy to the staging area. Let's do it manually down here. Glad to see that go, and that. Lots of, whoa, both side quests gone. Okay, white warg. And then flip this one. So forced. When it becomes day, each player draws one card. That's good. When it becomes night, discard one non-objective ally from play. Discard two non-objective allies instead if there are three or more players in the game. That's nice and easy now, I think, because I've got lots of allies out on the board, so I feel good about that. Yeah, I shouldn't say that really, should I? So let's go to the North Downs, I reckon, because... There's no risk of this going up, because I've just discarded the two side quests for now. And that will go up to three while it's night. And then I can engage one of these. I'll take down this white warg, so it only does one damage during the day. I'll do that to this miner. Shadow card, not face up yet. Um, but I think I'm just going to play this safe now and discard it. Attacking enemy gets plus one for each damage character the defending player controls. That was good I played that safe, because that would have killed Dane Arifat. Defend, discard this away. Because I can do that now. Uh, a wizard pipe that will of the west into my hand because I need it. And then I'll discard that minor into play for free. And that Galadrim's greeting is a card I want. So I'm not going to discard that. 
and then I'll do six and kill that annoying warg. End of the round, you go there. Now I don't need to raise my threat anymore um, because that was only on stage one. So I'll flip that and then when it becomes night reveal and encounter card and I also have to discard an ally. So I guess I'll do this first before I re um, read out that card. <laughs> Here comes a side quest, I'll just realize what it is. Uh, when it becomes night, discard one objective ally from place. So I'll probably get rid of um, maybe one of these miners because they've got one. They do do one attack though. I'll get rid of this Traveler because she's quite uh, weak, only one health. Okay, Doom 2. When revealed, either search the encounter deck and discard path for an encounter side quest and reveal it, or choose a different quest card in play to be the current quest until the end of the phase. Shuffle the encounter deck. You know what that means. It means that my claims about being safe from side quests are no longer true. Uh, that surges, so that's terrible, and that's going to steal my hand, which is also bad. I feel like, though, <clears throat> pardon me, I can actually clear this one when the position I'm in. And the cards I've got in hand, yes, Tester Will is also, like obviously amazing, but I feel like I can clear it was this. I'm getting a Surge. Now, I do get to heal, so heal and Dane Ironfoot would be nice. But I'm, I'm going to take this because it is not adding cards to the stage area. And you can make your own mind up whether that is a bad idea. Okay, flip those, and I'll just bring this to the top and put it in the staging area. Then it's the end of the round. Okay, turn six. It's not too bad. Four, five, six, seven, eight now and a four quest point location, and I still can't put progress on there because I'm night. It's night, sorry. Let's drink some tea. <clears throat> I guess what I'll do is lower my threat because there's nothing else I can do because I don't have a hand. <laughs> so I'll go down by six. One, two, three. I must remember that I do have Glorfindor on my discard pile so I can play him when I've got nothing better to do. Now we're looking at eight in the staging area. Let's say it adds four. We won't think about questing quite heavily. Uh, I'll do six, seven, eight, nine, ten, thirteen. Now this northern warg uh, is coming down this turn. I've got two defenses, Dane Ironfoot, and he's no longer blank. So I feel like I'm probably okay. If I quest with another one for fourteen. I'll put two progress out if I get the worst possible reveal. Well, plus surge, but let's just say I don't. Um, I'll go for this. When revealed, if it is night, raise each player's threat by four. That's quite good because I just went down by six, so who cares? And it is not going to add any threat, which is good. Um, so I can recalculate this. I believe it's eight. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So I make six progress. I can clear the north downs, but I can't put any progress on these cards because of this objective. Uh, I'm, I wonder if I should travel there. So you search the encounter deck and discard path for a warg enemy, reveals it, and puts it into play and engage with him. Shuffle the encounter deck. That's a good time to go and get one of these, I feel. And it also takes four threat out of the stage, and it's really easy to clear it because only one progress. So I'm going to do that. I don't want to reveal that one because it's surge. So let's take this. When revealed, each warg enemy gets plus one threat until the end of the phase. That is irrelevant. He'll come down as well. Move those over. Shadows. Now then. This is where it could all go wrong. I will defend the first one and probably discard the card off the second one. Exhaust a character you control. Okay. I don't see a need to discard this. I may as well just take it into hand. Uh, although I do have one under there, so maybe I will. Uh, I'll discard this shadow card. Okay, it's blank, but it's fine. Uh, so defend that one. I'll discard that. Try and search for something better. I'll take that because I'm losing allies. Uh, so no damage, and then I'll do six. Well, can I do that more optimally? Not really. I can only kill one of them. Let's just... 
kill that. And you can look at that, sadly. Alright, I guess that's the end of the round, so do this one. Flip to day. Goes back to the staging area, and I draw a card from that. Oh, Elf Helm, that's really good. Next turn. I think I want to play Elf Helm. Swap that there. Play him from the top of the deck with Gandalf, who's no longer blank. One, two, three, four. And I could discard this. I believe I've got one under uh, Lost in the Wilderness, but I'll just wait to see what happens. Now then, we've got two, four. Nice. Three, four, five, six, seven. If I quest with my Aether Swordsman, that's another six. So that's 13. Now if I get that one that's basically deal out the number of damage commit as characters committed to the quest, I'll do one, two, three, four, five. I could do one, two, three, four damage. So let's quest with Gandalf. 16. And I'm questing on Lost in the Wilderness here. One card. North Downs. Oh, softball. So 1 and 10. Put this over here and I get all my cards back. Thank you. Alright, now where shall I travel to? Uh, that's now only a 1 and that's going to be a 3 at night. So let's go there. Option engage this. Shadow, I'll get rid of it. If it's night, attacking enemy makes an additional attack after this one. Whatever. Just defend, and I'll just kill it. No problems. All right. This is um, looking good. And I'm saying that so I can spice it up so it starts to do crazy stuff. Because whenever I say these things, stuff goes wrong. So I'll flip to night. I'll do this one first. Discard one non-objective ally. Let's get rid of a minor. And then reveal a card. Wolf of Angmar surges into cold from Angmar. There we go, I said it. I said it, didn't I? So now I've lost um, all my damaged characters again. So I've lost my Gandalf and I've lost my Dane Iron Foot ability. Visibility nobody. Okay, next turn. Zigil Miner. They really want to come out. Uh, I didn't use Armour's ability last turn because I forgot amongst all the stuff that was going on. I'll discard the wizard pipe to gain a resource and I think I probably might not do anything just hold my cards uh, because I'm not going to lose an ally this turn. I've got enough willpower to clear that out of location I think and I can't place any progress so I don't see any point. There's only two threat up there. Let's quest for three, four, five, six, seven. I don't really want to quest with these while it's night. I'll do 10. That looks good. Reveal one card. Northern Warg. Each Warg enemy gets plus one threat. So he's a 3 and that's a 2 essentially. So that's uh, 1, 2, and then 3, 4. So 4 progress. Cleared North Downs. I'll travel there. And then I have to deal with both of these. So that's a 30 and he's attacking for 4. Okay, I'm going to discard the Shadow card off that. Attacking enemy gets plus one attack for each quest card in play, so that would have been five. And then I'll defend it with Dane Arafoot. Can't use his ability though, and then I'll defend that one. Now, this could be plus two, or it could be one damage. It could also be plus one for each quest card in play, so I think he's going to live no matter what happens. Deal one damage, yeah, so he's on his last legs though. Got to be very careful with him now. Uh, now let's try and kill these. I need four for that one. Three, four. And I need five. One, two, three. Oh, perfect. Five. Lovely. That cleared the board. End of the round. Do that. Flip. Draw a card. And then next turn. Okay, Westward Traveler. Nothing to use Gandalf's resources on right now. I've got the five resources I need for Glorfindor. I think I want to play an ally. I'd like to play this guy, but I don't really have a good use for his ability, so I might as well just play this Westward Traveler and um, let her ability whiff, and then I'll chuck her away when it becomes night. 
She's going into the void, you might say. Keep this one in hand. I'm 44 threat, so I want to be thinking about um, lowering threat too. So let's draw a card with my Elven Light. See if we can sort of blindly make our way to another Galadrim's Greeting. Oh, Silver Lamp, that's great. I'm going to play that. And then I will throw that card away to gain a resource. Now, let's try and stick some progress down on Howling at Night. Let's do 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, 18. It's going to be a big, big damage treachery if it comes out. Now, I also want to be thinking about if I do progress, can I actually block these enemies? Because Dane Arfut's looking super ropey. Um, I can chump. I've got a couple of chumps, so I should be all right. 18 to 0. Um, and I can't progress, actually, because I can only put down a maximum of 13. So, all good. Uh, one. I could have progressed, probably, if I quested harder. So, 17. Uh, we're doing 12. Get rid of that. I'll go there. And then we'll go to the end of the round. Refresh. Flip to Knight. Discard my West Road Traveller, I think. And reveal a card. Doom 2. That's actually doomed one because Elf Helm is ready. Remove each damaged character from the quest. Perfect time to get that. Next turn. Treebeard. That's a good use for Gandalf's resources. I reckon I'll play him. Don't think I used a staff last turn, so I should have gained a resource off that too. No mistake. Okay, one resource for him. Can't place progress, so no point questing too heavily. I'll draw a card with Elven Light. I might just leave that on the side now rather than put it in my discard pile. Ooh, hidden cash. I'll discard it to gain a resource, so I'll just leave that one there. Now, I think it's worth doing this. I'll play the Zigil Miner for two, and then I can swap this cash for whatever's there. Northern Tracker, say zero, three resources and an unexpected courage, so I gained one effectively from doing that. And I might um, draw a card, try and get to Galadrim's greeting. Another Zigil Miner. Okay, two resources left in hand. And I can't discard this again. Nothing is staging, I'll go for four, five, six, seven. Seven against nothing. Now, what's the worst it could reveal? Like five, probably. So, let's quest for another two. Mm, let's do Gandalf. Blech. One card. White Warg for two, so I get eight. So, I just clear the North Downs. He will engage me. I have to do two damage to a character, and that character will be blank. That's pretty terrible. I'm sort of tempted on blank and Treebeard because this is going to go away soon. But it's, it is awfully nice for him to be collecting resources. Perhaps if I nuke this toy maker, it's only a two willpower quester. Let's do that. I'll kill him. This is face up. Um, that's a blank shadow card effectively because it doesn't do anything in solo. So I will use Gandalf's staff to gain a resource. Just defend with Dane, no problems. Only two. Hit back and kill it. Kill it! done. And then refresh, do this one, flip to day, draw a card from the quest card, and yeah, new turn. Oh, not too soon either, because um, I'm 47 threats, so I'll be playing that now, too, and going back down to 41. It's the thing with this deck, it's kind of exciting, but also worrying at the same time. Uh, I'll do that, and I guess I'll draw. Okay, Gandalf Staff doesn't do me much good. Probably chuck it away. Yeah. Chuck it away. Gain a resource. Um, I don't need to play anything else, really. I think I can quest through. I might play one ally since I've got the resources, just as a sort of chump. 
you never know, might, that one attack might be useful too. So no threat in staging area, I just want to complete this one. So let's go two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No active location either. Only three progress. I'm going to seal the deal. There's 11. Uh, reveal one counter card for each quest card in play. It's basically a blank card with surge, so I'll let it go. Predatory Wolves. When revealed, each player must choose. Either discard the highest cost ally he controls, that's Treebeard or Elf Helm, or search the encounter deck and discard path for a warg enemy, reveal it, and add it to the staging area. Shuffle the encounter deck. Now, because I'm about to go through and um, it's a warg, I'm probably going to cancel this just to make use of that card because I've got two in hand. So it gives me a, keeps the advantage on my side. Good thing to do. Uh, and it adds no threat, so I get a bucket load of progress, which sends this cold from Angmar away again, thankfully. And I've got all my abilities back. And then we'll go to the last stage. So when revealed, flip the time objective to nightfall. Let's do that now, which I assume means we reveal an encounter card. So hunting pack, that's cool. Good time to get that. Uh, add pack leader to the staging area. Shuffle the encounter discard part into the encounter deck. Discard cards on the top of the encounter deck until X warg enemies are discarded. X is one less than the number of players in the game. Add each discarded enemy to the staging area. So it's going to be zero. But I still have to shuffle the discard part into the encounter deck. I'll give it a shuffle as well just to make sure. A little luck shuffle as they say. Flip that one. Oh, what I might do is just read this out because I don't think I got this far last time. So the pack leader is one engagement cost, four threat, five attack, four defense, eight health. Cannot have attachments, cannot be optionally engaged and forced. After pack leader engages you, exhaust the character you control for each warg enemy engaged with you. So he will come down last and he's going to exhaust two characters. So I can just exhaust those miners for that. Um, and I think. I don't think you have to kill all the wargs to win. I think you just kill him. So we go to 3B, battle with the pack. That's why it was so cool that that uh, little pack came out then. So pack leader cannot take damage unless there are at least five progress tokens on this stage. And forced, when it becomes day, discard all progress on this stage. The players cannot defeat this stage while pack leader is in play. If pack leader is destroyed, the players win the game. So what I need to do is survive this turn, take it to day, and then put five progress on it, then go back to knight because I can't optionally engage the pack leader and kill him to win. And if you don't kill him in that last round, you have to take all the progress off, so you might get stuck here forever, which I don't want. So because it's knight, these will um, engage because I'm 41, which is crazy because they're 40 engagement costs. Uh, and it also gets minus one engagement cost for each damage character I control. So that's, what, four? Yeah. And then the pack leader will naturally engage me, and he's going to exhaust two characters. Um, now then, I need nine attack to kill this pack. And it hits for six. I can use Dane Ironfoot's ability to defend both, potentially, depending on what their shadow cards are. And I don't think there's any threat rays um, in this, so I'm, what I might do is just exhaust these two, because I'm not going to chump with them. So let's just exhaust those two characters. Then we'll do their shadow cards. Face up, because silver lamp. Defending player discards one attachment he controls for each quest card in play. Attacking enemy gets plus one. If this attack destroys a character, remove all progress in the current quest. None of those things is good, or neither of those things is good, because that will be hitting for six, which means I can't defend it effectively with Dane, and this means I'm going to lose something, uh, because there's one quest card in play. So looking at the board state, what I might do is let this shadow card trigger, and I'll discard Silver Lamp, because I'm about to draw it. So I'll actually switch it into my hand with the Wizard Pipe. So I'm going to um, discard this shadow card, so he only attacks for five. And then I'll defend the hunting pack with Dane Ironfoot. He's four, so I need to trigger his ability twice. Use Elven Light, discard one, uh, two. So he goes up six defense. This will discard my Silver Lamp. Uh, and that is successfully defended. And then I'll defend the pack leader. And I'll just discard that Whisper Traveler. So, so the third trigger is his ability. 
and that's them defended. So I've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, did loads of damage that. So that is dead. And then we go to the end of the round. So it becomes day, which means he goes back to the staging area. And there's uh, no effect other than discarding the progress, and there's none on there, so I won't do anything. Now I'm in the refresh phase. I haven't gone to the next turn, so I'm going to say one here and um, discard the Elven Light. I'll gain one resource, and then I'll go to the next turn. Arm of Erebor is good, um, and the Toy Makers are good. So I'm going to play a Toy Maker. Uh, I think what I might do is swap it to the top of the deck so I can make use of Gandalf's resources. So I'll do one, two, three play this dude and I get my free silver lamp and then I can discard Elven Light and I'll play another one although having a cancel available actually would be very nice so perhaps I I won't do that uh, oh, what I can do actually thinking ahead is dis uh, gain some money so I'll say two here gain one resource Ooh. So I can actually get a net gain if I play the third Zigil Miner. And I'll say uh, zero. So I get three resources. And then I will go for the final Erebor Toymaker. And get this other Armor of Erebor out onto Dane Ironfoot. That's great. So if I defense. Just as my deck emptied, two, one card left. Test of will. It's a good card. Um, I'll do for four, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's four threat up there, so I want to do more than that. Let's do the full six with these guys. So we're doing fifteen against four. That's got to be enough to put five on there. Biting wind. When revealed, assign X damage among characters committed to the quest. X is the number of characters committed to the quest. So I believe that's six, because I've got Arwen, Bilbo. Two, three, four, five, six. So can I take that? One, two, three, four, five. No. So I'm going to cancel that with Gandalf's Test of Will on top of my deck. I mean, I could take it and kill these guys, but what's the point? Uh, I'll do 11. Not 111, 11. And I can't engage the pack leader because it cannot be option engaged. So I think what I'll do is recycle my deck. And then we'll go to the end of the round. I didn't use Gandalf's staff that turn. That was a mistake. Should have done that. Um, I'll flip. Go to Knight. Reveal an encounter card. Warg's Den. That's quite cool. We're in the den looking for the pack leader. And there's no effect of it becoming Knight anymore other than revealing that card. So refresh properly. Hidden cash. I'll say zero. Unexpected courage. Gain three. Nolan Tracker, he can't actually clear that, but it's two attack, which is really good. Uh, so I'll say one, gain one resource. I don't need that arm of Erebor. I'll say two, gain one resource. Maybe just play a little bit of um, willpower. And then I'll play a little bit of attack power. Now, one thing I need to be thinking about actually is that Nightfall card. And I think if I was in danger of threatening out, I'd take that tracker back and play the Galadrim's Greeting. But even if I get Nightfall here, I'll only go up by three because I've got Elf Helm. Uh, not night, it's not Nightfall, whatever it is, Sudden Darkness, I think it's called. It's the one that raises your threat by four. So I want to be thinking about that card uh, as a potential reveal. Because it's Doom 4, but it'll actually be Doom 3. So I'll only go up to 46, so I won't lose. Now then, there's 8 in the staging area. I don't need to place any progress, and I can't anyway because it's night. But I just need to um, make sure I don't threat up, really. So I'll do 6 from those guys. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I'm up by 3. I feel like that's probably not enough. I'll do Treebeard. I'm going to ready him now. So I'm up by five. Ether Swordsman has attack, which is quite nice. I feel like that might be enough. One card. 
Bloodthirsty Warg, it was enough. So I would make three progress by Kanksit's Knight. I am not going to travel there because I don't see the point. It just exhausts more characters. So I engage this. And it does not make an immediate attack because it didn't become Knight. So this comes down and exhausts two characters. I guess I'll exhaust my Aether Swordsman because they attack for the least. Shadow cards face up. Uh, nothing. And nothing. Ah, I think I made a mistake earlier looking at this. Because that's a unique enemy, and you can't use Gandalf's staff to discard a shadow card from it. It's actually only from a non-unique enemy. So I need to think about what that was. It was, I think it was plus one attack or something. So how would that have affected the game? I'm not sure. There's a, there's a mistake there, though. So I feel like I probably would have won anyway with this board position. Um but sometimes those small things matter. Anyway, I will defend both of these, and I'm defending for five with Dane's ability, so I don't need to do anything because they don't have shadow effects. Uh, so I'll just get rid of them. And then all I need to do is kill this pack leader, I believe. Um, and he can take damage because I've got a bunch of progress on there, so I need 12 attack. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There it is. He is dead. Victory 3. And I win, albeit, I think, with a small asterisk because um, I, I couldn't have discarded that shadow card. But like I said, I think with this board position, it's a matter of time, really. I've got the threat reduction in hand, so even if I did get something really terrible um, that raised my threat a lot, I could go down. So I feel like I would have won anyway. So good game. Now, that went much better than the first run. And I think one thing I did that was probably... Maybe if you haven't played this before, that might look a bit controversial, is actually take that quest and lose your hand. It's something that nobody ever wants to do. But I think when you do get a moment to do that safely, it's probably worth doing that. So I feel like that was probably a good thing I did. Um, and I think even though I wasn't particularly happy with my hand at the beginning of the game, um, I probably had some favorable draws. So I could get away with that hand. So I think the first card I revealed was... Um, a uh, pretty weak location and I had a bunch of one threat locations during that game so I feel like that run the luck was on my side and with a quest like this sometimes you need that so I am happy to have beaten it and now I will move on to Escape from Mount Graham so I think I'll take a little break and then give that one a go so thanks for watching and I'll see you there bye bye